Hello, guys, and welcome to this WMG session. We are discussing today uh, the topic of brain surgery, working on the mind. And I hope you guys can hear us loud and clear. We've got the chat here ready, too. We've got a straight hour with you guys to uh, do some uh, mindset coaching. And here today with us, I obviously have Don Miguel who is with us. We don't take his presence for granted. This is a guy who uh, I've been working with now for some years, uh, just a phenomenal mind, a phenomenal thinker. And so we always appreciate the chance to hear his point of view and perspective. This is CEO Club. For those of you who are outside WMG, this is CEO Club. This is where we get to sharpen the mind. This is where we get, this is, to me, it's part of the core of WMG. Success is like 10% technique. 90% of psychological. And so we want to help work on your psychology. And for the first time ever, not in the name of equality, I just think it's the first time ever we have a female on the show. <gasps> so it's going to be amazing. We have Haley Melinda, Mule Melinda on the show. And we, I've known you now how many years? Four or five years. Four or five years. Wow. It feels like a lifetime that I've known you for a while. Can everyone hear them talk? Can you hear me talk? Yeah. Just remember the Just direction getting, we're talking. Okay, this okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. We're talking into this beauty right here. Okay, yes. guys. So today we're talking about the power of the mind. And let me tell you where this topic came from. Because I have, Monday's my day. Monday, I call it Green Monday. And if you're in WMG, we have different zones in our day, right? We have the red zone, which is like hardcore, hard work. We have uh, your, I mean, let's not go with the red zone. Let's start somewhere else. You have your... Uh, why have I forgotten my zone? Yeah, blue, no, sorry, yeah, the, the blue zone. Do you have a blue zone? Time. Blue yes, zone blue zone, zone is time. family time. Family time. Jeez. Ye uh, uh, yellow zone for me is like work and occupation. Mm -hmm. um, red zone is where you're doing business. That means you're like, oh, you're on your business. Yeah. And green zone for me is like, it's the time spent um, uh, training your mind. And so I have a green zone Monday. Monday is my day to shut off everything and just focus on my mind, focus on my mental well-being, what we call mental health, focusing on my mental health and my mental well-being. It's a Monday. I literally like to shut down, get books, get music in my office. I sometimes lie down on the floor. And in my Monday time, I had a, a realization. And the realization, I had something happen to me when I was living in Northampton. Mm -hmm. I moved into my house for the first time, right? I get in there, and middle of the night, it's my first time in this flat. Middle of the night, I'm sleeping, and I hear, <laughs> I'm home alone. This is my flat, exclusive. I hear, <laughs> someone in the house with you? Someone sleeping in the house. So okay. I am panicking, you know? I can imagine. Like, I'm thinking... <laughs> some under my bed it's just someone's like it's weird so i'm running around i tried to tell my brain it's the neighbor but it was right in the flat mm -hmm. so i'm moving around the flat i open a little cupboard and there's a you know like the cupboards under your stair yeah there's a Creepy dude ones. sleeping in my cupboard first day in fact i kid you not and he is in full snore i go excuse me like really no excuse me mate <laughs> he goes, he goes oh. I said, you're, you're sleeping in my place. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. Can I, can I just stay till morning? I'll leave in the room. I said, no. <laughs> Is that a homeless person? I think so. Yes, I called so the local. Your, you um, leave your door open? No, no, no. He, the, the landlord didn't know he was there. So I don't know how, he must have been staying there with food and everything all around him. Because wow. the landlord didn't know he's there. And then I had this thought, right? Thoughts are just like that. Yeah. Mm. What is living in our minds mm -hmm. that we're just allowing to live there? Wow. It's just like I couldn't allow this guy to be there because he's a stranger. What thoughts are strangers to us that we're just allowing to live on the inside of our minds? Now, let's start with Haley. Let's let's start with the, the yes. with the best first. Thank you so much. Let's start with the best first. Okay. And Haley. Yes. Right. You. You're young. Mm -hmm. You were younger. Yes. That's a real deep statement right there. You're young, you were younger. Whoa, I'm woke. You were younger, right? <laughs> and when you were younger, you started speaking from the age of what? 16. 
16 year old. Yeah. Why would, and you, you, I mean, I've seen the videos. It's like a grown woman doing speaking, like in your mind, yeah. you're a grown woman. But you, your upbringing, your past has been really, I mean, everyone's past has been tough, but you have some, you know, some, some deep story. What got you to the place you believed? And then we see that belief, uh, if you, I'm going to cross over here. We see that belief manifested in WMG. Mm -hmm. You joined WMG mm -hmm. and within a month you became what? Senior partner. Senior partner in one month. There are people who've been with us for a year, two years, and haven't even hit partner. <laughs> Within one month, you become senior partner. What does this have to do with your mind? Tell us about your mind. Uh, my mind, I guess for me, I always say this, um, I have this mindset where it's either excuses or execution. <laughs> say that again. It's either excuses or execution, literally. Can you say it? Say it again. I'll say it one more time. Slowly. It's either excuses or execution. It's yes. either excuses. We just need to stop. Let's finish the session. Guys, this was a great time ah, that we've had. Guys. Now I want to be Thank able you. to see the comments as well. That was so, phenomenal. It's either excuses, excuses or keep going. Keep going. It's either excuses or execution. And what do I mean by that? It's you know, you get to a point in your life where you start to decide what type of life you want to live, right? And I think um But wait, why so young? Why so young? Like what, the, what does a 15 year old, why does a 15 year old business about the life they want to live? But do you know what? There comes to a point where you're, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Okay. And with me growing up, growing up in a single parent household, um, and I was literally sharing this with um, um, actually Sterling earlier today um, about how I bought Balenciaga today, right? So you for me, up? Yeah, if you bought Balenciaga's. Okay, 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 talk. <laughs> <laughs> But, okay, so I got excited anyways. But the reason why I got myself Balenciagas was simply because of the fact that I remember growing up when in school, Ralph Lauren polos were a really big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember they were like, yeah. what, 30 pounds, I think? 30 pound polos. I remember Indian Nine, everyone was wearing, and obviously we used to go raving. So as a rave, as when you're going raving, you had to be dropping, dropping colors, yeah? So people would be wearing their Ralph Lauren and the laces would be matching with the Ralph Lauren polo. Okay, yeah. But for me, I couldn't afford Ralph Lauren. I was out here going Primark. And I remember there was one time when I had to like firm it and say to my mom, like, mommy, I want, I want Ralph Lauren now. Like, I'm a big girl now. I can't be doing Primark clothes anymore. Mm -hmm. And every single time I used to come to my mom and say, mom, I want Ralph Lauren. Mom, I want Ralph Lauren. Mm. She'd always come back and say, Hayley, we just don't have money for that. Right. We just don't have money for that. And I think there was like a thing in the back of my head saying, there's going to come a time in my life where I never want to ask my mom for anything I want, I'm going to get it. Right. And I was, came and said, okay, cool. That's the... That's the floor. But I said, how mad would it be if my mom comes and says anything she wants, I can get it too. Come yeah. on. So your sense of prosperity was for a story's sake. You're yeah. like, I got to break the narrative in my household. 100%. Narrative in my household, we can't afford it. Yeah. New narrative. I'm not just going to be able to afford it. I'm also going to change my mom's story and my family's story as well. So yeah. it's bigger than you. So is this in the mind of a 15-year-old? But I don't, I've seen 15 year olds. Yeah. Some of the most shocking me, Jasmine shocks me. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, thinks yeah, different. From, I mean, she's already building business. She's mm -hmm. trading. I don't get it because at that age, I was just thinking about girls. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. As if you weren't looking at them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, but that's why I probably started at 15. That's probably the because reason. Tell us more. No, no, no. Tell we're on like for again, then. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's coffee. let's let's go back. We were in Haley. Sorry for interrupting you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, for me, um, sorry, I'm just trying to get the comments up here. But I would definitely come and say thank you. I would definitely come and say that what you're something to say, you're right. There is always there always does come a point in your life where you do end up doing it for someone else. Mm. You don't really think you're doing it for yourself. You're, you're too young. And also with me, one of the things that Jasmine are very similar to Jasmine is I got exposed to mentorship from a very young age. Yes. Um, I got exposed to wise counsel, right? One of my favorite books talks about wise counsel and how you need wise counsel in order for you to prosper. Mm. So it's, necess it's necessary that if you want to grow and if you want to um, not just grow in, in exponentially in, 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 grow in, in finance, but in life, mm. you need wise, wise counsel. You I think that's thing. so underrated. The yeah. need, the necessity for mentorship in terms of mindset, 100%. the necessity to see somebody who has already gone ahead in an area that you want to go ahead. Yeah. So you're young, you see a mentor, yeah. some guy or girl, 
It was a guy. A well, guy. Funny, funny enough, it's so mad because it's interesting that I'm in a I'm in a place where I'm in uh, a lot of the spaces that I'm in are very dominant male figure dominated. Yeah. And I've got men mentors. Mm. I've only literally only just got a female mentor. Mentor. And my female mentor is even based in America. She's not even based here. Mm, right. right. So it's interesting to know that I've gone from 16 to the age of now 22 how I've gone with just having male mentors and male figures in my life. Okay. But then the reason why is because I didn't have that growing up because I didn't have my dad. Okay. So yeah. I felt like I Makes wanted sense. a male mentorship. I needed a male figure. So it became like a that. bit of a father figure. Yes, in the yeah, 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 yeah. So, but then one thing I would definitely would say is that you've, you're the person that actually taught me this was in life, you either learn in two ways, whether it's mentorship or mistakes, right? Mm. Right. And your mentors are to teach you their mistakes mm. so you don't have to go through that too. Absolutely. And if there's something that you've got to understand is that once upon a time, we used to have um, physical maps, mm. right? Then there was a smart man that went ahead of him and said, you know what, I'm going to do... Um, What's the thing that Tom Tom? Yeah, no, Tom-tom. not even GPS. Tom Tom first. Tom Tom. And then someone Tom-tom. came and said, Tom. Someone came and said, okay, Tom Tom. We're gonna do uh, um, maps, Google Maps. Then there was ways. And the reason why I kind of talk about this process is that there's always someone who's learning from the person behind. Yeah. Correct. And then Tom Tom took it from yeah. the paper map and said there must be something better than this. Yeah. So yeah. mentorship is so important because I look at my mentors not to come and be like I'm better than you. But it's kind of that I'm realizing my mentors are my 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 floor, not my ceiling. Mm. Good. I can build off them, right? Good. So it's super important that you have a, a, a standard, but you also have a model that you can actually build off. Yeah. Um, and I think many people are unfortunately, I think where many people are falling is they don't have the right people to build off. That's mm. good. Oh uh, yeah, the right people to build off. But I'm finding something about kind of our generation, millennially type people. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna sound rude. Just, just say, be rude. Or... Just say it. There's a bit of a of a of a fickleness with regards to mentorship. Yeah. And by the fickleness of mentorship, it's like it's as though the mentor is meant to pursue you. Oh yeah, no, no, no. It's no. a weird no. thing. I've seen even people who've asked me for mentorship who wanted to be mentored by me ask me for money to mentor them. I, I've I've seen weird things like that. Whoa. Or like, look, I'm here. When are you coming, mentor? Uh, um, like, are you coming to my house to mentor me? It's like, whoa. I wish somebody. I used to, when I was being mentored, it's crazy. I did not have money. I couldn't afford mentorship. My mentor lives in Windsor here because you become what you follow. Yeah. You literally, literally become what you follow. Literally. And so, and that's a rule of thumb. And we're going to get onto you and mentorship because mentorship is a huge aspect for you in terms of becoming who you are today. You become what you follow. Whatever yes. the difference in the seasons of your life is the voice you choose to attach yourself to and listen to, the voice you choose to honor. And so I see like a, a lack of an honor code with regards to mentors um, in today's in today's world, like yeah. almost like a a bit of a a disregard, a bit of a light treatment, a bit of an entitlement. Ent- like you own right. this anyway. We, we do. We are in an entitled generation. Like our gener- the gen- our gen- and it's we're in a micro generation as well. So I think many people, it's not even a get rich quick scheme. It's like a I want to do what you do, but I need to do it tomorrow. Uh-huh. Right. So I don't want to. Uh-huh. You okay? It took you eleven years. Okay, I need. To, but I need to get to what took you eleven years. I need it in twenty four hours. I think partly because social media has become a bit of a great equalizer. Oh, yeah. And by a great equalizer, I mean we used to see celebrities or quote unquote big mm. people from a distance. Mm. Now I can talk to you. I can insult you, cuss you out on Instagram. I can shame you publicly i feel like i know you even though i have no idea of who you are and it's breeded a kind of culture of familiarity Mm. and familiarity is like something could be so special so powerful so important so beautiful and yet in the hands of a of a familiar soul it becomes unimportant and i think mentorship is so uh disregarded in with regards to access speed yeah. acceleration getting where you need to get to at a faster rate and even wisdom we don't have time to make mistakes i was reading a book by the rule of dubai he says i don't have time to make mistakes mm. somebody's already wow. made the mistakes mm. that's a mentor if you can attach yourself to a mentor then you can become hugely successful but i think the enemy of mentorship is is familiarity people mm. are just overly familiar somebody said to me once uh, questions like how will my mentor find me i was like find you have you read think and grow rich 
the guy who found was it Thomas Edison? Yes. He like he pursued him for uh, n- nearly his whole life, his, decades and decades. And he, he basically came to his office. He's like, "You're gonna mentor me." Yeah. And I'm going to make you great. That's the thing about yeah mentorship that people don't realize. It's not I'm coming to use you rinse you like a sponge and then I'm going to walk away Mm -hmm. and just be happy with what I got. It's I'm going to come, I'm going to add so much value to you Mm -hmm. that while I'm adding value to you, I'm also learning from you at the same time. I'm not Mm -hmm. just going to come and squeeze you dry and then go away. Mm -hmm. And this guy came in and said, I'm going to make you rich. I'm going to sell. What's your biggest problem? Mm -hmm. He said, this thing that we produce isn't selling. He said, I'm going to be the number one salesman of this thing. He said, how's Mm -hmm. it going to happen? He became the number one salesman. Both the mentor and him became enriched by it. Mm-hmm. Tell us about you and your mentor. Which one? I've had a, a cycle of mentors. <laughs> okay. You mean the one that I always talk about? Yeah, either. I mean, we have, by the way, you need a mentor for just about every, everything. That, yeah. that, this is yeah. what I mean. Yeah. You need a marriage mentor? Yes. Yeah. And it's great if you can find them all in one person. Yes. You need a marriage mentor. You need a business mentor. Right now, let me tell you what I need. I need a sleep mentor. I don't know who I can find Hello. who teaches on sleep. I think it's like maybe stress management. Yeah, you need a yeah. psychologist in that area as well. I mean, I mean, no. No, I mean, I don't, I mean, I mean, no, I mean Come so on, serious. save yourself. In terms of the fact that psychology actually talks about the, the, behavior, the behavior patterns that you have that actually impact you in terms of sleep mm. because it's a subconscious, right? Do you think and this baby is good enough that she's like, using to dig her way out of this whole I'm talking about She's digging away out with the spoon. No, right I'm now. being serious. Uh-huh. Like, if there's something that I've realized about sleep, is that yeah. there's something happening in the subconscious that, yes. that that doesn't allow you to sleep. So with me, I'm one person that I don't know why, but sometimes when I have my alarm, I don't know if is there anyone that wakes up before their alarm and they feel really anxious that their alarm's about to go off. Yeah. It's like an, and yeah. it's like you don't, it's like my, uh, I can't, I'm even getting up scared because when I think about the sound of my iPhone, yeah, it gives me a bit of anxiety. For me, I just have a sense there's no time. Mm. We need to, we've got stuff to do. Mm. The most dangerous and most addictive thing is when you start playing with your own potential mm. and you start seeing your own potential materialize, it becomes so addictive. People don't realize how addictive it is to take risk on your potential. But well, go ahead and tell us about your mentor. Um, so... My, my mentor is a name that is well known in this industry. It's an industry that we occupy within WMG. And um, he's, he's someone that is, his name was, it's called, he's the equivalent of Michael Jordan to, to basketball. He's actually called the Michael Jordan of this industry. And I came across this person in an audio tape at, at 13 years old. And I realized that I had a lack of good examples growing up and I needed, there's good information out there. I just didn't know where to find it. And I realized that there's people that have made millions that have helped uh, create inventions and change the world. And they've written books and left it for us to read. And we're not reading them. Right. And I listened to this person. His name is, uh, in fact, I'll leave his name till later. If you, if you've been around uh, WMG enough, you know that who I'm talking about, but, um, I started listening to him and it changed my, uh, it changed my mind about a lot of different things. And I said to myself at 13 years old, I'm going to be mental by this man. So this, this story about the guy that wanted to be mental by Thomas Edison, that really resonated to me because right. actually it was around that time that I, I read Think and Grow Rich. And I said, I'll be mental by this person one day. And I set myself on a path that I didn't know where it was going to lead to, but it eventually ended up by the time I was around 17 years old, I was chosen to be mentored by, uh, by this person. Um, and what it did for me was allow me to put my thinking in my pocket. Because one thing that he told me is if my, if the thinking that I had was enough to get me to where I needed to go, then I'd already be there. Say that again. If my thinking was enough to get me to where I needed to go, I would already be there. One so, more time. I so just when, felt like somebody needs to hear that. Even I need to hear that. If you're thinking was enough to get you to where you need to go, you'd already be there. Drop the offering. This is right, church. This is the offering. <laughs> <laughs> this is church. And, and what he told me is I needed to put my thinking in my pocket because every single time, and here's the reason why, although I eventually got there, I was actually one of the slow, slow mentees that he had because I was too smart to for my own good. 
I hesitated. It's like trying to run a hundred meter sprint, but every 10 meters you hesitate. You'd never win it because you never get into momentum. And my own thinking patterns was always the obstacle for me to be able to use the mentorship that I had to, to its maximum potential. So when I finally understood that I needed to, to borrow someone else's thinking, that's when I started to be able to actually make use of the mentorship. So, so that again, you need, you're using languages here, Miguel. You need to slow down a bit. Am I going to? I need it. No, but you just like, like this, this, you just said something. You needed to borrow. So, do you know how many people would hate to hear that thought? Mm-hmm. Why I gotta be you? Know, I gotta be myself. Okay. I'm I'm me. I'm no one else. I'm unique. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna Why give an would you want to borrow someone else's thinking? I'm gonna. I'm gonna give an example. Right. One of one of a, a powerful female mentor I had from the, from Uganda, Miss Janice Successor. I hope you are watching. I, 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 thank you so much for your mentorship. So she actually she told me when she was offering an opportunity to me, and I said, "Let me think about it." She said, "Okay." Go to your bank account, okay? Put your card in there, go to the ATM and do your research there. And I really closed my mind. I looked at me going to the bank She's account. She's rude, you know. Right. <laughs> she said, do your research at the ATM. Do your research there. I said, I'm in, I'm in. That's, uh, you know what? But do you know why I allow her to get away with that? Because she showed, she showed that she cared. She said, business. I don't need to say anything. Don't put your card in your ATM. Do your research. Let your ATM talk to you. (laughs) This is exactly it. This this is exactly it. But I let her get away with that because I knew she cared. Mm. Right? There's a lot of people that that want... Mentorships have the ability to be able to choose because they want to be able to invest the time and they want an ROI in the time that they invest too. And I understood that. When uh, Miss Janet's successor... Uh, introduced me to eventually the mentor I'm talking about. Again, his his name is Mr. Holton Bugs. He said, "Make sure you're concise with your words. Don't waffle because he doesn't. We don't have much time." So I made sure that every single word was intentional. And this is why some people um, were angry at me because there were some people that were doing better at me um, in terms of, of of business. But yet I was the one that was chosen uh, to be to be mentored. And I didn't get that at the time as well. And I, I understood that it was because I was conducive uh, yeah. to the information and the time that he was willing to invest into, into someone. And I emulated the information. I didn't just listen. You can heed, you can listen, but not hear, mm. right? I emulated it, everything. By the time that he said something, I've written it down. I've listened to it myself. I've spoken to myself three times already. And I've already started to think about how I was going to apply it that specific day. Why is it important? So I need to, I'm adopting uh, a bit of your mind here. So you're hearing a mentor speak. Yeah. We got a group of people, you hear a mentor speak and it's like, trigger. Mm. But you hear a mentor speak and it's not like, oh, I'm triggered. It's like, I'm, I'm going to listen, repeat this to myself. And then I'm going to take immediate action. Yeah, mm. Why does your brain work like that? And somebody else's brain goes like, you know, there's two kinds of shoppers. Basically, I take it from me and my wife. I go to the shop. She's here. She's watching. She's, oh, she just walked in. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> she goes into like the shop. She got up. Oh, she's back. <laughs> she got up one hour. Then down the next. Yeah. Then up the and she smells. Oh, it smells sweet. Smell this, baby. Smell this. You open it up, smell yeah. it. She's looking at me now. She just and she was like, smell this, smell it. She's shaking her head. I'm gonna be in trouble later. <laughs> she she like, smell this. And I'm like, they're like, ah. When I go to a shop, it's like, I know what I'm getting. Yeah. Because I've already that. looked at it. I'm I've like, already looked. I know what I'm getting, I've gone. Yeah. What is it about certain people's minds when you give them the instruction as a mentor? Yeah. It's like it enters their brain and it's like, no, I gotta go. The, 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 I and then some people's minds say, that's I feel, it. I feel that just even thinking about that, I think many people wanna to, want to play victim. Say it with your chest, sir. <laughs> I was trying to get me in trouble. Yeah, sorry, go on. Like, a lot of people wanna play victim. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, a, there's some people who generally, I always say this, like you can't, some, you can't help people that don't wanna be helped. Mm-hmm. Some that's people true. love, they find, they find security mm-hmm. in their traps. Absolutely. They but do you know what else I think it is? I think it's your instruction enters somebody's story. Yeah, yeah. 
And every single person in the world is an actor with a story. Yeah. I hear stories all the time when I hear people speak. And the, uh, you, if you really listen to people, there's what they say here, and then there's what they're really saying here. Um, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to stop this business I'm doing because uh, I want to, like, go away and pray. And what are you really... <laughs> <laughs> what are you really saying? You're like, I don't like un uncomfortable situations. Mm -hmm. I don't like feeling like a failure. Mm -hmm. And growth makes me feel like a failure. I like feeling like a professional of the old as opposed to an amateur in the new thing. Mm -hmm. I like feeling like a, a big boy in a small pond than feeling like I'm out of sort over here. Mm -hmm. What they're really saying is I'm scared. I'm afraid out of my pants and I'm going to hide in some religion. I'm going to hide in, uh, in, in, you know, giving up or going back to what I used to do because I can't stretch anymore. Or I don't feel like a stretch. When I hear people saying, I just don't have the money. I think that's the worst thing ever because the truth is whatever you find important remember when you were younger yeah you didn't have the money. You got the money or you stole it. Listen, yeah. let's be real. Mm. Whatever you wanted, when you were younger, you made it happen. Mm. But can, when you're older, it's like... Mm. Can, can I tell you why I, I made sure I was intentional with the results, though? Because people... You see, you have to honour the, the mentors that have, uh, you know, sacrificed honor their time. the mentor. And, the, and how to honour... The ultimate honour for your mentor is massive success. Do you know what's crazy, right? Uh, there's a guy I'm mentioning, phenomenal guy. He's actually in WMG now. And if he's watching, hello, Juan. But Juan, Ke Juan. Is, Juan is in WMG. He's in your team. Yeah. And Juan came from a, a dark background. I'm talking like uh, deeper than most people would ever know in terms of hardship. You're talking like Colombian mafia. You know, Colombia, this mm. is like, you know, this isn't your drug dealers here in the UK. These mm. people make like these young boys running around look like Teletubbies. I mean, they, these, are some, <laughs> these are some serious drug lords he was dealing with. And then he moves here, he gets in, involved in all the stuff. He gets involved in a life of crime and blah, blah, blah. And he turns his life around. Phenomenal guy. Mm. Turns his life around. He works with me here. And he said to me, he said, he's crying. He goes, you've done so much for me. My life has transformed. What can I do? And I looked at him and said, succeed. That's all I need you to do. Come on. Honor my input. Honor the sacrifice. Come honor on. the time I've spent to you. Sometimes when I wake up in the morning with my team, I got a team called Fearless, and I'm still trying to kick the fear out of them. Because I wake up with my I wake up early in the morning, 5 a.m., 6 a.m. to train these these guys, and a quarter of them show up. It feels so dishonorable mm. when a mentor who doesn't need to, and not just a mentor, but the CEO of the company mm. that said, I'm gonna take the time out to train you early in the morning. Mm. But it's like the way to honor that voice. Then I say, hey, guys, host the analysis. I'm scared. So mm. why did I spend time pouring in and teaching? Mm. Part of the honor code, part of what you just said is so right, part of the honor code that people can drop off is succeed, win, do it, put it into practice, or at least be willing to fail over and over and over again till you get it. Mm. Sorry, go back to your story. So, yeah, I... I I desperately wanted to succeed for myself. I, I had my goals, I've envisioned it, and it, it's run through my head a number of times to the point where success to me was an expectation for myself. People think that uh, success is going to be, the day of success happens and it's going to, oh, they're like, wow, I'm successful now. No, it, it, it's, I had to, one thing that he taught me was I had to practice success in my head to the point sure. where when I arrive, it was an expectation. Why do you have to practice success in your head? Because the, the right environment that you have in your mind needs to happen before it actually happens. Right. The certainty right. that needs to happen. This is what I talk about when you don't have certainty. It's like uh, an airplane going through a runway. The, the reason why a rock, uh, when anyone knows that a rocket that needs to go to the moon, for example, it uses up 60 to 70% of its fuel on takeoff. Right. It needs to go on maximum output when it's up in the air. That's when it can start to steer and calm down a bit. But let's say the, the rocket hesitates and it starts to go back down and never goes into full momentum. That's when it crashes. That's when it never is able to get to, to take into flight. So, so you see a rocket, it gives 60%, 60 to 70% of its fuel on takeoff. Mm. because it needs once it gets into orbit it needs that momentum that yeah. it got 
from the push to get into that place where it can kind of coast a bit or flow through Absolutely. success or what we call momentum, which is the leader's best friend. Mm. But when you see people start with us in business and they sort of just, mm. they don't move sometimes. Yeah. Sit on it for months sometimes or they just get stagnant and still. What stops us from giving that? Because I, you know, I say you need to give you 100%. Actually, from what you're saying, you need to give at least 60%, 70%. At least, at least give you 60% to what you're doing. And some people give their fearful 5%, mm -hmm. or their fearful 10%, or they do, you know, business as a side interest or a hobby. Mm -hmm. What made you wake up? Because you were in WMG for a while. Mm -hmm. You had a story. I had a story. Man, you had a story. You what want suddenly, to tell story. I want you to tell the story because actually what I've seen that's really powerful is when you woke up, everyone else woke up. Mm -hmm. You've literally woken a team. Your team are a woke, in, a woke beast. They're literally, everybody's like awake in your wake. They're all awake. Shout out Team Diamond. I love you. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> team Fearless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We need, a, we need a dance or something. A dance. What was that? You know, you know what I want to do? And this probably is not going to happen until I want a diamond team hucker. You know how the New Zealand... No, that's team. us. That's us. And I actually know <laughs> by heart. So I'm going to teach my team the first. No, do, they have two huckers. Yeah, I but think. we actually have professional dancers. Like We have like rappers. We have singers. We have speakers. We have money makers. We have I speakers. almost fell asleep. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> share your story. Can we come in unity, guys? Oh, what was the story again? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's... Is a story. Uh, I think I shared this um, in snippets over the past few uh, CEO club uh, sessions. I, I had, I was traumatized because when I started to get that success, and at some point I actually reached a good. In fact, I had come to the point where I was able to, you know, buy my mom a house in the Philippines. I, at the age of nineteen, I was earning, you know, one hundred fifty, one hundred sixty grand a year. That was. That was the, the pinnacle when I was thinking, this is where no, I can't get back into where I was now. And there was a point of no return. But there was a few things that happened that, that just had to humble me. But the difficulty was my, my confidence was on, um, the, the difficulty was my confidence was on my result and not my wings. The reason why... Um, a bird can stand on a branch which is about to break is because his confidence is on its wings, not on the branch. Mine was on the branch wow. that I've actually built for myself. Wow, and God. although I built the success, there was Wait, still hold something... Wait, on, hold on, hold on, sorry, Miguel. DJ Rewind Selector. That... <laughs> back, all the way back. Yeah. I'm, I'm no, I'm being serious. What you just, what you just said yeah, for real. about the say branch and the wing... Mm. Because you've got to understand that there's so many people who their identity is no longer in their wings, but the branch, even mm -hmm. though they know that the branch is about to break. Mm -hmm. That's where their identity lies. And that's where many people fall and crumble. I didn't know it's going they don't want to find, yeah. they don't want to even accept that they're about to fall. Mm -hmm. But because they found so much complacency there, and because for them, you've got to understand, once upon a time, that branch was strong. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, that branch was their, their everything. Mm -hmm. So sometimes detaching yourself from something that's just about to fall mm -hmm. and realizing that you no longer need the support, but it's actually even within you. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to brain surgery that many people don't want to accept that mm -hmm. it's actually within them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, the absolute truth. And things happen to the point where I... And uh, I think we, we touched on this last week. Uh, my, my, I reached such a height that I realized that I was still scared of heights. Mm -hmm. And I looked down, yeah. and there's a long way to fall. And when I did felt, look, a different, different stories, I want to do a training on what's called what to do with a dollar. I learned that from my mentor. What exactly do you do and what do you invest in to make sure that you um, really create something that extends further than just business and commissions and things like that, which we do in WMG. But when I started to make money, my, my uh, outgoing started to increase because I started to take on debt, I started to buy things, monthly outgoings. And then when things dropped back down, my outgoings didn't necessarily just drop with right. it. It stayed the same. So I lived this whole thing where my life was like a movie. I was 18, 19 years old for like a year and a half. Then all of a sudden, it's like it was taken away from me. 
And then my mentor said something like this. If you took Bill, Ga if, if Microsoft is taken away from Bill Gates, if, if football is taken away from Ronaldo, for example, you take these things from these people within a year, they'll, they'll come back they'll and they'll back. do the exact same thing. <laughs> right. Right. And I realized that because I was so reliant on my mentor still, I never, I realized that I had to, there were still things in my foundation that I needed to go rebuild. And if I didn't go back to rebuild them, it would have been a lot more consequential later on. Um, and it was necessary. And I can only say that in retrospect now, because at the time it was hurtful, mm. right? It was hurtful. It was stressful. Um, but um, my story is when I came into WMG, I wasn't looking really for an opportunity. I just wanted to, to honor the CEO because he did something absolutely amazing for me. And uh, it was uh, essentially um, uh, an answer to my prayer. And I wanted to, uh, I knew he started WMG. I knew I'd, I had experience within this industry that he was uh, starting to occupy. And he said, why don't you take care of this? And at the time, I was still hesitant to do it, but I just knew I wanted to, to honor. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a counterfeit of action, which was teaching. So I- Wait a minute. What the, what you just said? I said- Wait a minute. Is this I, mic still okay? Did the mic even break when you said that? Sorry. I'm sorry. What did you say? Scary, I like, <laughs> say it again. Say it again. I wanted to trick my psyche that I was doing by creating a counterfeit of doing, which was teaching, okay? So within a whole year, I Do remember- Do you know how many people you just killed? Hey! And die, die. Teach us! Teach us! Die. Are you doing what you're teaching? That's powerful. Are you just right. teaching? That is powerful. Because yeah. a lot of people hide behind teaching. And you yeah. know what, Miguel, I feel like you I always, I said this yesterday on our, in our diamond call. I feel like you live this, right? In a sense of many people don't know the reason why Miguel actually dropped out of uni, mm. right? And whenever I hear the story, I just laugh because I think this is so lit, right? I think, I think that this is a very valid reason to drop out of uni, especially if you're paying nine K for it. Mm -hmm. And he asked, he, Miguel was studying business and he asked his business lecturer, do you own a business? <laughs> <laughs> You're savage. And his business lecture You know, Jasmine no. did the same thing. Mm. So why are you like, teaching business? You don't own a business. Would you go to the doctor who has never done surgery before? Right. No, but and I've read a book about uni. it. And I think that you're right in a sense of the fact that there's many people that hide behind teaching <laughs> because they're way too scared to do. Mm. But do you know what the scary thing is? Unfortunately, we live in a society that forces you to be a teacher before your fruit actually even produces. Right. So everyone kind of jumps to mentoring. Or I'm going to coach people. I'm going to help do this. I'm going to help so do many that. Life coaches are right oh, there. life coaches everywhere. <laughs> Life coaches, uh, life coaches abound. Like, I don't even like people even... When I don't like hearing coach, it anymore because you're a life coach, but you're not doing anything in your life that you should be coaching me on. There's a life coach that invited to come on this call. Don't worry. I've, I've, even, don't worry. I've, I've even seen... I've even seen a single married coach. <laughs> That is Wait, you're different. saying they encourage me to be single? No, no, they're single, but they're a marriage coach. Have they been married before? No. A kid. Oh. Where do, where was their credentials? What 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 makes them valid? Read a book. And people buy into people, that? No, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's crazy. But see, for me, if he's I'm a good a, self, she's a good he or she's a good self. Very successful. So for me, if I'm gonna be mentored by someone, I need to see the picture. <laughs> You know what I'm it's like going to a gym instructor and the gym instructor shows up and he is flabby, 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 flabby. You know what I'm saying? Like belly, 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 belly. Belly's going to get you. Like big, I can't be trained by you. Would I be encouraged to be trained? Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like I went to my gym to choose a gym instructor. Mm -hmm. Half my gym instructors looked... <laughs> they looked like I didn't want to look. They looked like me. Like I was trying to train... <laughs> Dave, why are you saying that? <laughs> they look like me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I see that for real. I they look like me. <laughs> they were really, really, really like big. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I was watching them like, but you're here trying to. I'm meant to be inspired by you, mm. 
So I chose some other guy because you're not the advert of what you're teaching. A mentor is somebody, you know, uh, someone, yeah, John Maxwell said, a leader knows the way, mm-hmm. goes the way, and shows the way. Right. A tour guide is somebody who says, oh, you know, the Bahamas, Bahamas right now, amazing. You go there and there's beach and there's sun and sand. A travel agent's like, no, he knows the place because he lives there. He's like, don't listen to these guys. They're selling you a dream. You want to go here. This is where the locals are. They're really friendly. Why? Because they've been there or they are there. That's what a leader's meant to do. A leader's actually meant to lead from the front, not shout from the back and go, hey, guys, we can do it. So let me go back to you for a moment because I'm noticing something about you and the only way I'm going to say it is Miguel's in the zone you're in the zone I am I see it 24 7 I see other guys just kind of the you know part-time in or some guys who like well, full flesh sort of like yeah, I'm just gonna relax here mm. what's got you in the zone you're in the zone I literally see you it's like a fish going through a, uh, yeah 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 uh, okay got this then you're on the next voice message okay yep yeah, yep yeah. guys if you do that you're literally leading as though you're leading a global business and I think you've convinced your team that this is real yeah yeah they still think it's all fake <laughs> Well, others for me are like, they still do lallying and just yeah. try it out. But you've literally convinced yourself and your team. How did you get yourself into that state? Because I saw you before. <laughs> it's, um, you weren't there. The, the secret is, and I guess some people may know, but um, being around the wrong people will put you in an environment which is not conducive to you understanding what you're capable of be be around the wrong people uh, long enough that you completely miss your purpose and your destiny and i guess there was a a change in who i was around um the start of this year and it was weird as if you know you have to go through this period when when your people around you change but it was immediate yeah. the, the the month that certain people in my life uh you know disappeared i had the best month in like the Ever. past two years. Yeah. Wow. Two years. And I realized that, hmm, um, that was, that was one part. There was, it, it's a multiplicity of different factors that, that actually came into it. But uh, it, to tell you the truth, I was just tired of telling the stories of this is what I did instead of this mm. is what I'm doing. And this is what I'm planning. If I was even tired of telling people what I'm going to do, because I haven't even started what I said I'm going to do. Right. But I, I started going back. I was talking about my definiteness of purpose. And I also remembered that there was things, how you do anything is how you do everything. When I started to become complacent, one thing, what in the height of my momentum under Mr. Bugs' mentorship, I said the definiteness of purpose to myself probably a hundred times. Do you know why? Because he told me he did it about 4,000 times a day in his head. He knew how to say it in his head while he's speaking to someone. He knew how to do it in his head. He recorded himself, listened to himself and repeat saying it to himself when he was sleeping. And he said 4,000 times a day. So he convinced himself that he was a multi-billionaire. With and how much does this man make now? He, he's, I think he's, he's turned a, a billionaire this year. Right. Well, well, the, but his story is he had to argue with his wife whether they can afford toilet paper or food sometimes. That was that mm-hmm. they had to debate about those kind of things. So um, understanding that I've been to his house and for people that like things, 26 bedroom mansions, I was able to fully internalize that this person came from here. It's real. It's just this is someone that but it I'm grew standing there. from his mind. It grew from, from and my this mind. is where I want to get to. Haley, think and grow rich. It's a title of a book, yeah. but it's a very prolific statement. Yeah. Think and grow rich. Yeah. What do, what's the relationship to you in your own life mm-hmm. of your thoughts and how they transmuted to their physical equivalent? Wealth is a mentality before it's a reality. Come on. Literally, wealth is a mentality before it's a reality. Wealth is not even defined by finances. This is why I always kind of say, money doesn't change who you are. Money amplifies who you are. Okay. So if there's something wrong within, money's just going to amplify that. Right. So I always come and say, change your heart posture. Before you even ask God to change your bank account, ask God to change your heart posture. I right. always say that. Because 
you've got to understand that your mindset and your heart needs to change because whatever's in there will always amplify because mm. I've seen people who are so insecure and you've got all the finances in the world but when you're buying finance from a place of insecurity what happens is you're no longer even using that finance to enhance your life yeah. you're using that finance to enhance your insecurities right uh, oh, my goodness my throat <laughs> go on <laughs> So yes. I know people who, and, and and okay, I'm coming from a lady's perspective because I think men, some men don't want to talk about it. But I'll be real, like BBL, right? I know it's kind of like, oh, she's going there. But in terms of, in in an area of where BBL? a lot of people that get BBL in terms of enhancement, but oh dear God, we're going there. right. Okay. But no, no. But I'm, I'm being real. But it's not to disrespect anyone that's doing that. But it's a sense of I know many people who are doing that from a place of insecurity. Right. So really and truly, are you coming to? show that you've got money or you come to show that i can just cover this insecurity with my money now yeah, okay and i think many people what happens is that they no longer deal with insecurities with money yes they conceal it yes and finance is not there to conceal i agree finance is meant to encourage you to heal and yes. to deal and this is why i'm a real advocate of healing i'm mm. a real advocate of changing your mind changing your heart because you cannot allow finance you can't put a responsibility on finances because realistically and, you know, I think th my whole mindset changed when I was watching um, Jeffrey Epstein oh, on Netflix. You're sick of the different time. <laughs> no, I, 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 I have to go deep go because Jeffrey Epstein was a billionaire. Right, right. He was a billionaire. Yeah, and something Everything, else. But yeah. yeah, exactly. And something else. Mm -hmm. He was a human trafficker. Yeah. <laughs> But then, but then it's kind of like we have to we have to highlight the fact that he's a billionaire though. Yes. Because at what what point was money not good enough that you felt that it was right for you? This to, is true. To I mean, this, yeah. right. this is this is what I mean in terms of money doesn't solve all the issues. This is why healing and this is why working yourself. That's why building yourself, dealing with your insecurities. Yes. Is so, super money important. essentially can destroy you destroy because you it amplifies you. who it, it you amplifies are. Who, exactly. It makes you more of who you already are, and yeah. I think that's so vital. But what also what I want to deal with here, this is what this was my morning this morning. Yeah. Let me tell you what I did this morning. I wake up in the morning, I'm laying down in my office, and I'm just thinking about a thought. Toby, you are loved. Oh wow. wow. That's all I did. I didn't pray, I didn't I'm just thinking this thought over and over and over and over again. I don't know why for the last week I suddenly got a, a, a seed of something somewhere mm. that life was rejecting me out of the place that I'm in. Mm. And it was putting me in a bit of a panic state, actually. Mm. So I decided to find out what's going on. There must be somewhere a thought. I don't know where I got it from, mm. where I entertained it from. But there must have been somewhere, just like that tenant living in my house, there must have been somewhere a thought living there, snoring loudly that was releasing some kind of feeling. This is the power of thoughts. Thoughts release feelings and emotions. Mm. Emotion determines what you do and what you don't do. The question I ha you have to ask yourself is, how would you act if you knew you were totally loved and totally accepted yourself? Mm. Boy. How would you live in life if you knew you were totally loved and totally accepted yourself, regardless of whoever rejected you in life, you just got to that state in your brain, in your mind, where you are just, you've accepted you. I think that's what happened. I think you've, I think I was, searching for, I was searching for the answer, but I think when certain things fell in line, I think the, the burden of the fear of judgment of others right was disappeared just disappeared because yes. i finally accepted that i was i was loved right i loved myself too yes and i was no longer gonna prevent myself going forward so because good. i'm clinging on to the the scraps of what right. i have right now right and i think that's th and that's, that's success accurate. in business to me that's yes. the wealth of a business person you can't love others if you don't love you yeah if you don't, if you hate who you see in the mirror, how can you build a team? How can you help people? How can you want the best for the people around you? If you, if parts of who you are repulse you, mm -hmm. if you feel sick when you look in the mirror, or you can't even be alone by yourself or go to a cinema by yourself, you don't even like you, but you want other people to like you. You have not yet even lived in your own skin and enjoyed who you are. Listen, I feel like I'm talking to someone right now. You haven't quite accepted you 
you can't get to where you want to be. And I actually realized I've accepted myself in huge regards, but the more you journey into success, mm -hmm. the more it exposes, like the light yeah, of success exposes yeah, the shadows. And the more it exposes the areas of your life where you haven't accepted yourself, where you haven't loved yourself, the territory in your heart that you haven't yet conquered. And to me, to conquer further out here without elastic limit for myself, when I've reached my elastic limit, I feel like I'm going to snap. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like I don't have a leash for my own self. How do I feel like I have capacity to venture further and move more? So I sat in a room realizing the key to like, changing this environment out here i got to change in here and let me tell you i got to love the me that people rejected i got to love the me that got dragged online you know on twitter and different things like that i got to love the me i've got to accept somewhere in my life that not everyone's gonna like me and we live in this fickle world where everyone wants the popular vote mm -hmm. and so everyone does things out of social pressure just to conform to a, a, a need to conform to a social norm even if we know it's not right in our mind there's such a conformity in the world that people who don't really love themselves are serial conformers they just do whatever everyone else wants them to do as opposed to thinking individualistically so i came to myself and we talked about default modes the other day i came to myself and i was like you're loved I said the statement and something fought against it. Wow. Inside my heart, something went, and I could say it with, so I had to say it again, you're loved. You know when you're saying something to the point that it feels like you're trying to delete a program that's in there. It's like not just words, it's a program. And I'm trying to delete this old software that's going on inside of me that's just saying, yeah, you're loved to this extent, but not to this extent. It's like, no, Toby, you are loved and totally accepted. Something goes, no, you don't deserve to hear this. But see, if you don't say to yourself, you're going to live your whole life waiting for someone else to say it to you. And then if someone else says it to you and you feel good, is that really called self-esteem? Because isn't self-esteem self-esteem when it's with your, within your own self to determine your estimation? Yeah. If you put your self-esteem in someone else's hands or in your money, or in your bank account, you'll never really have more money. Mm -hmm. But if you determine your estimation, like how much are you worth Haley? in this season? Let's not, how, much, how much is current Haley worth? Give me a financial number. Priceless. Okay, priceless. But give me right now, if you're going to speak for me, yeah. how much should I be paying you? At least 25 bags. 25K? Yeah. How much should I be paying you? To do what? To speak. Just to speak on this podcast. How much should I be paying you? 26 bags. 26 pounds. I don't know, 27. <laughs> but imagine there are people right now with not even your level of content. Yeah, you're right. Who are charging 100,000 for half an hour. Yeah. I mean, one of my mentors is one of them. What gets you to that place mm -hmm. that you believe you're worth so much mm -hmm. that you won't undersell yourself? And so when you are speaking, when you are connecting with people, it's like you happen to life instead of life happening to you. And this is, this is where uh, uh, you both can chip in. Yep. But we were looking at this. There was a guy who spoke about the four soils. That, you know, it's in the Bible. Jesus spoke about four different Jim kinds of ground. Wayside, but it's also, who was the life coach who spoke about it? Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn. Oh, if you want to research him, Jim Rohn is like uh, Tony Robbins' He's mentor. mentor. There's Tony yeah, Robbins' mentor. mentor. Yeah. Right. He's so, the person that started the, the motivational speaking industry altogether. Yeah, Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn that you, actually launched he it. He started in the network marketing industry. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. He was a network marketing coach before he was a life. He was wow, a life wow, wow, wow. People don't know that. So this guy speaks about, I mean, steals from the Bible here, and he speaks about the four different kinds of ground. Mm -hmm. In one of his teaching, I was listening to it, and he talks about how you got rocky grounded people. Mm -hmm. You've got thorny ground people. These are four categories of people. Rocky ground, thorny ground, wayside, and good soil. Mm -hmm. In WMG... In your business, whatever you do, you're either going to be one of these four. You're going to be this rocky ground, wayside person, thorny, or good soil. And even the good soil produces 30, 60, 60 or 100. 100. So let's go first. What to you, if somebody's watching and they need to identify which one of the four they are, because you need to identify to overcome it. If you were rocky, what's rocky? Rocky ground to you, in your opinion. Those but, are the ones where they're not coachable, teachable, trainable. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. What do they sound like? 
Well, let me let me think about it. Let me do my own research. This right. is after they've joined the business. Right. Well, I, I heard that someone was teaching it this way. What makes this one this way? Let me just have a look. Let me think about this. Let me do that. Right. And you try to give them an instruction and, and they, they don't want to listen because I feel like some don't like being told what to do. So yeah. that's, that's the unteachable spirit. Yes. Some have a teachable spirit, but they're not, be, they're not allowing you to coach them. They're, right. they're, they're only, they're, the fullest extent is to where their current capacity is. Good. So, so that's rocky ground. Yeah. So because of time, we're going to say this quick because we got a rush. We got about ten minutes. What's rocky ground to you? I very much say the same with Miguel. I say rocky ground is when you are so caught up in your own mind that you're right. no you're no longer willing to allow anyone else to help you. Yeah. When I think rocky ground, I think hurt. Mm. I think hurt, hardened, traumatized. I know it all now because I've been through the school of disappointment. And because I've been through the school of disappointment, I get life. Mm. And I'm going to explain to you what life is about. And so when I try and sow a good seed of a, of a business into rocky ground, guess what? No depth. No depth. It kind of just, maybe they get excited for a moment, but it goes into the rocks mm. and it dies. Yet there's people living life just rock. Mm. Okay. Wayside. When you think wayside, what do you think? The one that quits. They come in. And then they try it. And their brother says, oh, yeah, try that thing. My, 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 uh, I actually lost money in that. So really? Yeah. And then they quit. Right. I would say the person that never even started. <laughs> it's, you're like, they you joined, even, you but they never start. started. You never even started. It's right. like already, the quit, you entered with a quit mentality. You entered Ooh, with a quit. They wanted to quit. Already. Because there's so many people already from WMG. I know people personally who are like, Okay, if I don't, if I don't get, I'll be real. Like, let me, let me, some, let me, let me shoot some offend, heads because there's offend. some people that came into WMG already. I was like, okay, if I don't make this return in one month, I'm out. Right, Did you make your return back from your university degree in your first month? But you didn't <laughs> you leave. You paid it back. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> but, this is, but this is the thing though. Like a lot of people need to understand that they, they, they're entering into something. I'm forgetting it's an investment. Right. They're, they're entering into something quick on return on investment, forgetting the highlight word is investment. But you've got to understand before return on investment is there, you must invest first. Yeah. So right. many people just feel because my foot, there's, there, you know, there's a, entitlement. A it's like you, some people literally put their foot in the hot water and think they're having a bath. You're not getting clean by just having your foot in there. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> okay, if, good. if your foot is there, so. For me, wayside is like passive. Yeah. You almost don't care. Submarine. It's like, submarine. Yeah. yeah. It's like just, you know, the seeds scattered on the wayside. It's like people who are just elsewhere. Mm. They're not focused in life. They're not there. They're, they're sort of, they're so used to a distracted kind of everywhere life, the butterfly mentality. These are people who are selling 10 different businesses while they're in WMG. They have no focus. They're sort of real spread th uh, things where they don't prioritize. They don't know what it means to even prioritize wealth or factor wealth into their life. Yeah. Yet they want to help the world, yeah, but they can't yeah. afford to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they want to help pick on fights that they have no business being involved in mm. because they don't understand priorities yeah. and what needs to be done now. So oftentimes I find wayside people do the right things at the wrong time. Mm. Um, okay, uh, the next group of people is, and we're doing this because it's called brain surgery. We want you to understand what your brain, we're talking about your heart, your soul, your psyche, everything about you is like right now. We're using these as metaphors. What's the next one? Um, you said, obviously, we're not around wayside. Um, the defensive ones. Ooh. Um, I got one for thorns. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thorns are okay. So we we talked about the the ones that quit, the ones that were uncoachable, teachable, and trainable. Yeah. The thorns are no the fearful ones. No, the fearful ones. They're you. The ones that you you get you get frustrated because you see the potential, mm. but they fail to move. Familiar? Yeah. The thorny ones is the ones that counterfeit doing with teaching. Um, but the thorns can be removed. And, you know, to hold the rose, oh, you thorn. need to suffer the thorns sometimes. Woo! And, yeah, th those are the thorns in, in, in okay, thorns. my opinion. I'll Give say it to the us. thorns for me is 
victim, victimization. You want to play victim. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know how my mum raised me. You don't know what I've seen in my life. It's you, you are- Stories. It's a stories. As I said, ex- it's if excuses or execution and they choose the excuses. Yeah. The thorns to me, you know, they are worried about everything. Mm-hmm. They don't, you know, the thorns come in and choke the goodness of mm-hmm. what's going on. These are people who are worried about things that haven't happened yet. Yeah. They live in two realms, depression or anxiety. Mm. Depression means they're always afraid of the past and what happened. <laughs> Anxiety means they fear the future. Mm-hmm. So they're always constantly in a state of fear, even with regards to how much they'll make, when they'll make it, will it really happen, will it? And, and they're so in it that it's led to analysis paralysis. Mm-hmm. And so whatever you give to somebody with that heart condition, it gets choked out. Guys, can you write in the chat what you are? Can you be honest? What are you? What are you? I'll tell you what I'm dealing with in my own life, the thorns. Okay. Yeah, I'm dealing with the thorns. thorns. I'm being honest. What are you dealing with? Yeah. A lot of thorns right out here. here. A lot of thorns going on. I'm sure we got some wayside people. I'm dealing with wayward. I think you meant wayside. <laughs> I hope you're not wayward. <laughs> some people are like rocks. Okay. Thorns, victim story. Thorny, thorny, rocky, rocky. Yeah, you're going to go through deficits of purpose. Now, listen. The powerful thing about this is all of this can change. Yeah. This is the powerful thing. You know, we have a garden in our house. When we lived in Woolwich, we had like a tiny thing. We didn't care about it. When you move to, a, when we moved to uh, uh, Windsor, now we have this massive field at the back of our house. It's a whole responsibility, right? And you have to go out, uh, well, we don't go out there. <laughs> you, we get a gardener to go out there. But if you neglect it, guess what grows? Stones, yes. weeds, thorns. If you keep neglecting your mind, to do to live your life let me tell you what's growing in your heart right now thorns weeds and you, i realize you don't have to do anything mm. for that to happen and pests start living there and all kinds of stuff your heart is a garden mm. you keep neglecting it and wondering why you're seeing certain fruits in your life yeah. is because of certain things you're allowing to go on in the garden of your heart and your mind Can I- also highlight just because I remember your house in Woolwich. I remember your garden. Woolish. Woolish. I remember that. And I you remember were there. That. I've always wanted to see it. Yeah, yeah, no, can I we ever take a drive by there at oh, one point? Listen, I've got videos. I'm, I've got videos. You got? Yeah, 100%, 100% sure. sure I've got videos from that house. Trauma. But um, I, it's interesting. The reason why I'm Probably where my thorny ground came from. The garden that you had in Woolwich in comparison to the garden that you have now. I feel like your garden in Woolwich was still really big because I remember when we first saw it. Like, I remember just before oh, we yeah, left. Oh, yeah, it was kind of good, wasn't it? It was big. It was and then I remember the grass. Yeah, we just never went into it. Exactly, but this is what I mean. This is my point. In a sense, like, you never, <laughs> you never yeah. valued the garden. So Ooh. even the treatment of the garden, you didn't care enough for it. Oh! <laughs> because, no, no, let me tell you why. Because I've, met, because I've met your gardener here before. Your gardener's really nice. I met him like last week. Lovely right? guy, yeah. Amazing guy. But I remember when you guys were about to move and you got Joshua with a machete to cut down the grass. <laughs> and why yeah. do I bring this up? Because of the fact that it's not that, it's because it's you... You get to you get to choose the treatment you give That's according good. to the value. That's so true. So you still you still had a garden, but because you didn't value it, you gave cheap treatment. That's so you true. You just got someone to just get a machete. I think that's true because what people sometimes do, maybe they value other people more than themselves. Exactly. So you so, get treat, cheap treatment on so yourself, you, right? Rather than actually, if so, this is the thing of why it's so important to value yourself, love yourself, understand yourself, because what you value is what you're able to put time into and actually come and put treatment with. So with this garden, listen, you, I remember you was like, Kason, don't go there. The garden is there. Like I see you just, you guys are like, give the gardener, and if you work. The other garden was just, 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 just like, are you done, Joshua? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, we just, just chop like, and go. That was it. <laughs> it's, it's really that what you're saying about the heart of the garden. If you are looking at your heart and you're not valuing it, and you look above all things, guard your heart. Yeah. If you're not, if you are not taking that time to guard your heart, if you're not taking that time to treat it, if you're not taking that time to actually value it and understand, like, listen, all the issues of your life come from that place. Yeah. So if you're out here doing cheap treatment you're going to end up having a lot of issues. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you got to be careful what people are allowed to say into your garden. Come on now. you got to be careful, especially people. You mentioned people. Yeah. Um, because it's like a crab or buckets. You try and get out and people 
Where are you going? Come back in here. Who do you think you are? You got to be careful of the climate that people create around you. Some of your mates are really inmates. They're, they're keeping you incarcerated at their level. And if you don't learn how to break out of your friendship circle, yeah. you won't learn how to break out of the Ooh, present level of life one. that you're if in. If your friends are not there to help you grow, they've got to go. They, mm. You need to have friends with benefits. Ha! <laughs> We're not talking the naughty. <laughs> People say, oh, you know, your friend is <laughs> to be about you need to have benefits. Someone literally just jumped off the line and went, what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, what's up, girl? How you doing? How you doing? Anyway, so, so let's land the plane. It can be uprooted. Number one thing you got to do is identify it. Come on. you got to identify what's going on. This is why journaling is so powerful. Self-talk, quiet time, yeah. meditation. Yeah. I'm not talking about this. Is, mm, no, no, that's dumb. I'm not talking about humming till you find some frequency <laughs> and enter some juice. <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about <laughs> That's just weird. Stop it. I'm talking about like normal stuff, okay? I'm talking about going into a room by yourself quietly and listening. Listen, commune with your own heart. Listen, what's going on in there? What's going on in there? You keep trying to, you're so, such a busy body. You're trying to find out how everyone else is. What about you? So when people ask you, how are you? I don't know. Why don't you know? You live in yourself. How come you don't know who you are, how you are? Take the time to develop EQ, emotional quotas. Take the time to develop some emotional understanding of who you are. Get quiet. Discover. Assess. Understand. This is why sometimes, I said this before, I, I get tired of, our current, oh boy, I'm going to go here. Go, go, go. Our go. current go, anger go, justice go. kind movement that we're doing where, like, if you don't post online, oh, you're racist, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, get tired yeah, of it. Yeah. Let me tell you why I get tired of it. It's the hypocrisy. You haven't even tidied your room, but you want to tidy the world. Mm. You haven't even tidied your own life. Oh, it's, wow. the, it's the hypocrisy. Because two things destroy every nation. Yeah. The nations are destroyed from outside and from within. Yeah. But what we don't realize is the worst enemy is the one within. You have not even fixed your own life, but you're trying to fix the world. Come on. It's true. Uh -huh. it's like, Come on. It's like, I've said, it, I've said this before, and I always say, the older that I get, I realize humans don't find it hard to commit to things. They find it hard to commit to healing because mm. facing your own demons is the hardest thing you can ever do. Right. Yeah. Fix your internal universe before you come out here fixing the external. Can you please remove your plank yeah. before you remove the world splint? Yeah. Hypocrite. This is the best thing you can hear. You're a play actor, fake, a hypocrite. Yeah. If you think you can go out there and do what you need to do, but your own life is dilapidated, messed up, your children hate you, your family doesn't like you, you got to fix up your own life first. Tidy your bedroom. That's what my mom told me. Yeah. I wanted to run a cleaning company. My mom gave me facts. Say, you can't even tidy your room. Ooh. How are you going to tidy other people's houses? Yeah, huh. Facts. Facts. Need to change Personal you responsibility be. before yeah. corporate responsibility. And I think every what you said, I think the thing that I always highlight in terms of I know of we just lost people. When you when you point a finger, there's always three fingers pointing back at you. So I've true. learned that from you. So true. When you point a finger, there's always three fingers. So there's always three fingers pointing back at you. So before you even try and point a finger at someone else, you've got to ask yourself, be be retrospective and ask yourself, look within. Right. Ask yourself as to are you actually living a life worth worth emulating exactly so we want to deal with some we want to uproot the junk that's in there that means yeah. you've got to identify it and use your tongue as a as a weapon use your tongue and use use your words your words should say things like i identify that thought and now i uproot it yeah. and i break agreement with the thoughts oh and the feelings and the associations and now i welcome a new thought yes. and we're going to deal with that in subsequent sessions but here Miguel has something that I want him to read. This is Miguel's definiteness of purpose. Listen, we're like computers. We need programming. Your subconscious mind, not your, just your conscious one. You know, when we try and change here, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. There's a deeper mind, a subconscious mind. 10% of what you see of the, what you see of an iceberg is only 10%. 90% is underneath. What if 10% of you is, what if 10% of you is being decided by 90% of you that you're not even aware of? If you don't know how to program, self-program, not wait for other people to do it. I know mom wasn't around, dad wasn't around or whatever the story is, but you've got your own mouth now. You can build yourself. How do you build yourself? Miguel, would you give us your statement of uh, belief? Hear this, okay. please. It's powerful. I just wanted to give a bit of context to it just very, very quickly of why I, I, I created one, all right? I read a book called Master Key to Riches by 
um, Napoleon Hill, the same author of Think and Grow Rich. And he, uh, he talked about creating a definiteness of purpose, which is your North Star, your destination. Okay. And I had written, in fact, I've read the book so many times, but in the first probably eight or nine times that I read it, I thought, it was like, oh, I can just think of my definiteness of purpose. It wasn't until that I actually written it down and followed the instructions that I saw, started to see a, a few shifts. And it really came from the, the perspective that you, eight, eight out of 10 conversations that we ever have is between me and me, is between you and you. So if you quit, it's because you talk yourself into it. You, which means that if you talk yourself into quitting, you can talk yourself into doing it. And I realized that I had to change my internal dialogue, just like my mentor did, to make sure that I was listening to the right things. Because I can listen to my mentor, but when I'm alone, who am I listening to? Okay, so my definiteness, uh, my definiteness of purpose is something that is, is going to improve. I'm going to change. I've got one for my, my, my spiritual got, life, but... We've got six minutes to close. My definiteness of purpose is one which is simple in context but involves steps which in the past were difficult. My plan shall improve over the course of my life. But four years is the maximum time I have set to accomplish this definite pur purpose. I shall within four years develop the skills and habits that those before me used to de develop wealth and riches. These skills and habits are to be a possibility thinker, a do it now attitude, a server of people. So let my, my God lead the way to be disciplined in all my path, to make friends wherever I go, to have a commitment to continuity, to set an example for those to follow my lead, to speak the truth even when the truth is hard to speak, and to speak the things which I don't have now, but will have using the skills and habits of which I speak, to set goals and develop plans to achieve them, and to work the plan until the job is done, to be the best that I could be, to understand that how I do anything is how I do everything. I will think much bigger, much faster. These skills and habits of which I speak will be the contributing factors to my definiteness of purpose. I will be a multimillionaire with at least 10 million in assets by April 2025, April 21st, 2025, because, because it is the right thing to do. That's my definiteness of purpose. Shoo. Do you see his success is not an accident? He's programming himself to be that way. You have got to learn to program yourself. Miguel, can we make that available to everyone who's in WMG? Absolutely. Uh, a version of that. And if you want, you can take it, tailor it. My advice is record it on your phone. Record yourself saying it. Listen to it. Say it seven times a day. Challenge yourself. To get to the place where you say it three times a day, then increase it to seven times a day. Say it out loud. Say it boldly. Say it until you reprogram yourself. Make Alexa say it. Yeah, Somebody say it. Ah. Yeah, make Alexa say it every single day. I'm going to do well, that with my Alexa. I definitely would say another one as well, Miguel, like the fact that you have that, that's so interesting because I live by one as well. Wow. And why, mine is Mary Williamson. Okay. One of my coach, favorites, coach, yeah, coach, yeah. Coach Carter, I, I live by that quote. I live, my life is literally, I've always come to say, there's a scripture that I live by, Matthew chapter 5 verse 16, that let my light shine, God, that's what I want. Yeah. Like, I, I want people to see my life and be inspired. I want people to see my life and be like, wow, how is she doing at 22? Because everyone's like, oh my gosh, you're 22, like you're working for this, you're doing, like wow. I want people to look at my life and say, no, this is a light. Like I want, because when people are like, oh my gosh, like, oh, I don't want to blow because some, some people are going to hate something like, no, let them see that it's possible. Mm -hmm. So the whole point that I wanted to quickly just read for everyone is a reminder. I read to myself. Every Paul, day. by the way, Paul, write to me on Instagram and I'll, we'll arrange a meeting. I think we're arranging something for WMG. Me and Haley will uh, host something next week. We'll do a meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next week, we got tomorrow. We're doing a WMG launch tomorrow. Sterling, Miguel, and Haley are going to run it. We're getting ready to take some massive action. Let's do it. Okay. okay let's do it. Continue. Tomorrow we've got a launch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So going back to Mary Williamson. All right. So our deepest fear is not that we are adequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful, powerful beyond, beyond measure. measure. It is our it is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant? gorgeous, talented, fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? You're a child of God. Your plain small does not serve the world. I'm going to say that last bit again. Your plain small, small does, does not serve, serve the, the world. world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking 
so that other people won't feel insecure around you. Mm. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. Mm. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that's within us. And it's not in some of us, it's in every single one of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people the permission to do the same. And as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Powerful, powerful. And you've got to understand, does your presence and does your life liberate someone else to want to live a better life too? That's what's powerful about what we're doing. Mm. It's the liberation of other people's lives. And if you can see it like that, instead of telling some other story that you've got drummed up in your head, if you can see it as the liberation of other people's lives, you'll see lives absolutely transform. Guys, thank you for joining me on today. We're going to put out on our social media. Follow me at Toby Rimey. Follow at WMGTV. Follow Haley at... At Hayley Melenda, H-A-Y-L-E-Y, Mike Uniform, Lima Echo November Delta Alpha. Follow Miguel at Miguel Pascual Official. We need to shorten that somehow. That official is just... MP Official. <laughs> MP Official. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to arrange a WMG pre-launch tomorrow because we've got our big launch coming up next month. We'll arrange a pre-launch just for you guys who want to be a part of it and for WMGs as well who feel that they have friends who they want to get stirred up. We're going to have that launch tomorrow being Friday. But uh, we'll, we'll, arrange we'll arrange the time. We'll arrange the time. We'll let everybody know. I can't... I can neither confirm nor deny. But we'll arrange the time and let every single person know. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you for allowing thank us to come you. into your homes another week. Why don't you tell a friend next week we're always like every friend. single week. It's free mentorship. Yeah. Free. Think about this. Free mentorship. Why don't you tell a friend to tell a friend? Why don't you share it out with as many It'll people as you can? It'll be selfish you not to share it. Absolutely. It'll be very selfish for you not to share it because I honestly would say, and I mean, you guys, as in you two, I've learned so much from them. And I always say this, Chief, like my life wouldn't be where it is if I never met you. Appreciate I always come and say that my life completely shifted. 2016, my life shifted, and every single person can always come and say 2016 was a trajectory year for me, mm. right? And it's kind of like, Sometimes I even think I think if, I think the one thing that I honestly come and say when I started feeling good about myself is when able, I was able to actually give back to you and and, and pass Nicola. Oh yeah, yeah. It was whenever yeah. I was able to come and see through and be like, no, let me actually give you something to actually come and say thank you. Please. So even if I'm, we're not asking you to come and sow seeds and, and kind of give money to us or anything like that, we're just saying share it because yeah. what you're getting here is invaluable. What you're getting here is priceless. And the most beautiful thing you could ever do is allow someone to actually feel and see that they can be liberated from stuff like this, right? Absolutely. So I'm just saying to share it. It's free, but it's gold. It's invaluable, y'all. It's I agree. Gold. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. And we will catch up with you again next week and some of you tomorrow for our live pre-launch. God bless and have a good day. Tim Diamond. Fearless. <laughs> <laughs>